Yo vivo en México y cuando la gente me escuchan hablar en español, todos piensan que en Filipinas hablamos español, pero no. Para que, a ver si traigo sí, mi pasaporte. Es un sol, ¿no? Toma. Sí, un sol. ¿No quieres tomar un café? No, es muy tarde. ¿De qué país eres? Filipinas. Ah, Filipensa. Eh. The Philippines was a former Spanish colony, right? So, how come we don't speak Spanish? Or do we? Prior to colonization, the area now known as the Philippines was a group of islands connected by water. Independent, advanced, socially complex and ethno-linguistically distinct communities ruled by respective tribal leaders. Most of the time, peacefully coexisted with each other. Trade with neighboring nations to the north, like China, Japan, and Taiwan, and to the south, like Malaysia and Indonesia, was commonplace. When Fernando de Magallanes arrived in 1521, he united all islands into one nation under the Spanish crown and named it Las Filipinas after Philip II of Spain. From then on, the Philippines came under Spain's control and sphere of influence, slowly but surely, for the next 333 years. The archipelago used to be Spain's primary foothold in Asia. Due to the Philippines' unique geographical location, not only did it become an important base for the empire's stake in the profitable spice trade, it was also a strategic location for conducting commerce from the Americas to the Far East. What else? Surprise, surprise! Most towns and cities also have Hispanic names. You've got the obvious ones, towns being named after places within peninsular Spain and towns named after saints. Anyone here from Nueva Vizcaya, Nueva Ecija, Pamplona Negros, Cordoba Cebu? I bet you've at least been once to a place named Santa Cruz, San Pablo, or San Nicolás. Another thing worth mentioning is that having a Hispanic last name or a Hispanic sounding last name is a norm. I can bet you that the top 20 Filipino last names are all Hispanic in origin. I can tell you how many Cruces, Santoses, Reyeses, Garcias, Mendozas, Bautistas that I know. If you're from the Philippines, leave a comment below on what do you think is the most common surname or in Tagalog, apellido, pero in Spanish lo decimos apellido. To streamline government processes like census and tax collection and to further strengthen their rule, Spanish colonizers enacted a law making it mandatory for everyone to adopt a surname. There was literally a catalog where people can choose Spanish or local surnames from. Most of the indigenous lowland population and some Chinese immigrants as well chose to change their last names to Hispanic last names probably believing that this change might benefit them. Food? Oh yes, you've got afritada, caldereta, menudo, mechado, longaniza, picadillo, arroz caldo, tocino, tapa, even adobo. The list goes on. There are roughly around 4,000 Spanish loan words in Tagalog, the most spoken dialect in the country, and roughly around 6,000 in Visaya another widely spoken dialect. Lots of words are spelled differently or bastardized, and lots of phrases are used in a different context. These two dialects in particular, because the regions where it's most widely spoken were centers of Spanish governance, which are Manila and Cebu. Uh, 75. Almost everyone in the Philippines knows how to count in Spanish up to 100 and they don't even know it. Así que por ejemplo nosotros también contamos 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The way we say the time in the Philippines is also the same. Por ejemplo, les doy un ejemplo, digamos a la 1, a las 2, a las 3. Eso es un ejemplo de frase en Filipinas. Anong oras na? A la una na ma. Days of the week and months are also the same. Nosotros también digamos enero, febrero, marzo, 
pero las letras son diferentes. Por ejemplo, marzo escribimos con S en vez de Z. Lots of words related to kitchenware or cooking are also similar. Por ejemplo, los cubiertos, digamos igual, tenedor, cuchara, cuchillo, eh, mesa, silla, casi todos los sustantivos, la verdad. And so are things in relation to law and governance. And then there's Chavacano, a Spanish-based Creole language widely spoken in the Zamboanga region. Brief history. In the hopes of further uniting the archipelago under Christianity and under their sphere of influence, the Spaniards established Zamboanga as a foothold in the predominantly Muslim South, a means to communicate was needed between the locals and the Spaniards. In many cases, some Spaniards will learn the local language to gain trust and establish a connection with the local population. But in this case, a grammatically simplified form of a language used for communication between two people not sharing common language was established. This is what you call a pidgin, which then eventually turned into chavacano. Although spelling of words may differ, it is very similar that a person speaking chavacano can sufficiently efficiently and aptly converse to a Spanish-speaking person. Filipinos. Ah, Aquí Filipinas. está nuestra guía, Mayra. Hola. <laughs> Ella lo, eh, va a explicar. ¿Qué es eso? Ahorita, ¿a qué te refieres? During Spain's 333-year-long rule, Spanish was, of course, a widely spoken language. It was even officially considered a national language alongside English and Tagalog until it officially wasn't in 1987. After 300 years of rule, you'd think Spanish would be widely spoken across the country today like it is in most Latin American countries, but no. For almost a century now, English has been the country's lingua franca. What happened? First of all, the majority of the indigenous population of the Philippines remained intact. Unlike in Latin America where the indigenous population was wiped out not only by the colonizers, but also by imported diseases. Furthermore, because of the Philippines' relative distance and isolation from the rest of the Spanish colonies, not a lot of Spanish people emigrated to the archipelago. Next, in terms of literacy and education, during the Spanish colonial period as it is today, it is a privileged only reserved for those in the upper class of Philippine society, meaning Spanish-born emigrants, also known as peninsulares, Philippine-born Spanish people, also known as insulares, and half-Filipino, half-Spanish people, also known as mestizos, basically a minority of the population. In the greater part of colonial rule, the majority of the population didn't have access to education. Despite developing a public school system towards the latter part of colonial rule, the masses still were not able to adequately express themselves in Spanish and were still more comfortable in their native tongue. To add to that, throughout all the years of colonial rule, everyday transactions of the masses were conducted in the native language. Big picture, there really was no true social and cultural and linguistic assimilation that happened in the Philippines. Towards the end of the Spanish colonial rule, a strong sense of nationalism also emerged in the Philippines, mainly propagated by the Filipino Spanish-speaking, mostly European-educated class, aka Ilustrados. Filipinos longed to distinguish themselves from their colonizers. So when did the transition to English begin? Well, to begin with, Spain ceded the Philippines, Guam, and Puerto Rico to the United States in 1898 under the Treaty of Paris. This means American dominance in the archipelago henceforth. The Americans also set out to establish a Philippine public school system in a system of governance mirrored after the American systems, all of course anchored in English. The masses now have access to learn a language more than their native tongue. The rest is history, as they say. At the early stages of American colonization, Filipinos ate up American hegemony and they still do. The American dream is still strong amongst Filipinos. Just look at the Filipino diaspora all across 50 American states. In the Philippines, American pop culture still reigns supreme. Consumer behavior is still mostly dictated by what's trendy in the United States. If you have any other ideas as to why Filipinos don't speak Spanish, 
Please share your insights in the comment box below and share your thoughts. It's kind of a pena, como digamos en español, because what if we spoke Spanish? What would be our life and economy right now? Hey, thanks for watching this video. I just want to clarify that I did not learn Spanish in school. I just pushed myself to be in a Spanish-speaking environment and mostly just put myself in places where no one speaks English. I'm gonna have a video about how to effectively learn Spanish without taking classes or paying for courses. So keep it here and thank you so much for always supporting me. Have a great week.